Someone knocked us back. So what about this local derby then? Well, we've got 11 players out there and I'm sure that they'll be trying their best for us. I'm sure we'll put up a good show. We'll kick off five minutes away and a chance mm. for you, Jimmy, to upset somebody again. Who's going well, to well, win this I mean, one? Not at all. You've got to look at it uh, <laughs> in its true context. We don't want to be seen to be grovelling to Paul Val supporters too Stoke. much, Phil. Oh, Stoke. Stoke. You've got to fancy Stoke. They've got a better, time, a better team. They're obviously a better side. Uh, I would expect Stoke to win. They were impressive against Leicester City, of course, last yes, week. Yes. And they, Vale have had their injury problems, as we've just heard. As, as John... You see, this is the problem with, with, with a team like Port Vale, is what John's saying. They get a few injuries, and they really are up against it. And where, where as you can see, Stoke, you look down their, their line-up, they're, they're very strong in defence. They've got one or two good forwards, as we know. And you just actually sort of look at the situation and say... Local derby, Stoke are going to be really geared up for it. They're at home. You have to, you have to say that they're the best side, and they will win. But anything can happen. The players anything are on their way out. Anything can happen. We so may get a cheer. You never know. <laughs> to the Victoria Ground and John Sillett and Brian Moore. Stars. Well, the 35th Potteries League derby. As usual, a big and a passionate crowd here at the Victoria Ground. And the Stokes fans come here knowing that their side could go top tonight. Port Vale, they are struggling. But of course, in a derby game, we all know that form can so often be thrown right out of the window. Let's take a check on the two teams. Stoke have certainly made a bright start to the season. It's a bonus that they can now field an unchanged side. It's the one that beat Leicester last Saturday. Led superbly from the back by Vince Overson. Kevin Keane's delicate touch in the midfield with the tenacity of Nigel Gleghorn. And up front, of course, Paul Fesky Salido. Two excellent goals last week at Leicester. Well, here is the 24-year-old Canadian, formerly of Birmingham City, and at uh, five foot four, maybe the smallest player on the field, but certainly nobody's going to be livelier. Andy Hill takes his place in the Port Vale defence, signed only two days ago for Manchester City. He's only had one reserve game so far this season. This, then, is the Port Vale side that's already haunted by injuries. Defender Neil Aspin is out with a serious shoulder injury. He had an operation today. And he's now joined by the leading striker, Martin Foyle, who goes into hospital for a toe operation on Wednesday. And that may keep him out for as much as two months. Ian Bogey comes into the midfield in place of Ray Walker. Lee Mills is up front in place of Foyle. Referee today is Gurnham Singh from Wolverhampton. And, of course, as you probably know by now, three substitutes allowed for each side this season. It can be two outfielders and a goalkeeper, but both managers today have opted for three outfielders. A breezy afternoon, John Sillett. Good afternoon, yes, Brian. But at the same time, the pitch is looking magnificent. If ever there's been a pitch that you want to go out and play football on, as an old player, I would say that's it out there. It's in wonderful condition. Derek Hartley, the groundsman, done a wonderful job. I don't know how they managed to have it so green with the water shortage, Brian. <laughs> Certainly Stoke should come into this with a lot of confidence now. They've had a really bright start. Well, they've had the win, which you so badly need this time of the year. You know, they went to Leicester, and it's a good result there. And Port Vale, with the injury problems, will be looking to settle as soon as they can. Alan Hill at right back, just hope he can settle in quickly because he's had one practice game which was against his reserves, his old clubs, Man City and uh, therefore he may be a bit short of match practice, Brian Well, Stoke fans dominating the noise here at the Victoria Ground they had their biggest crowd of the season at Stoke for this fixture last year just over 20,000 As John was saying, it's a swirly wind. But a terrific pitch, a good atmosphere, a lot to play for, particularly in terms of Stoke. As I say, if they score four times, they go top of the Ensley First Division tonight. Port Vale with just a single point so far, and they've yet to score a league goal. They're in the white. And away they go. Port Vale then attacking the goal to the right. Andy Hill getting his first touch. Mills chasing this one. And uh, goalkeeper Muggleton had to get down quickly. Suddenly there was a, a gap appearing in that Stoke defence. And a big Lee Mills 
was quickly onto it. Formerly with Derby and Wolves. And Port Vale get that away well. Sanford with a header for Stoke. Ian Bogey now for Port Vale. Orlickson knocking it forward. Lover getting it away only as far as Cleghorn. Solido plays the ball inside, but uh, Gleghorn is down uh, with a challenge there. It'll be a free kick to Stoke. Case of both players there, Brian, going in for a ball. It's going to be one of those matches. There's, there's going to be no sort of love loss between both sides. They're going to go in fully committed to it. And Mr. Singh has got an important role to play that he shuts down on it early. And let's remember what we're here for is playing football. Local derbies, they're always the same. There is always a bit of bite, a bit of needle in them. And therefore, the referee's got to set it down as quickly as he can. Stretcher on. Of course, it's the, uh, with the new rules this year, or the new interpretation, the referees have to go basically to the player and say, do you want treatment on the field or not? Or do you want treatment or not? And if he wants treatment on the field, he wants the treatment, he has to go on a stretcher and get it off the field. But I think Gleghorn's injury probably is a little more serious than... Uh, it looked close to the knee to me, Brian. You know, is the studs going in round about the knee. Well, they will certainly miss him, Stoke. Toddy Orlickson with the free kick. Not a very good one either. Bogey. Castle, then a spell in London with Millwall and then Leighton Orient. Tankard playing the ball in uh, to Lee Glover. Number eight is Andy Porter. Here's Hill again. And uh, Clarkson getting that away quite comfortably for Stoke. Kevin Scott chasing this one. And wins a free kick. Well, that was kicked away. Fort Vale defender there. Actually, Dean Glover saying we didn't hear the whistle. I think it was uh, Gareth Griffiths who actually, yes, who kicked it away. Well, whether he heard the whistle or not, he's going to get a yellow card. Kicking the ball away. Dean Glover saying quite clearly to the referee, we did not hear your whistle. It is a problem for players, you know. There's a good atmosphere here, very vocal, and therefore that could be a possibility. If not, the young lad's a silly boy. Uh, the big defender who uh, passed a test this morning to play in this game. That's something he uh, least wanted was a yellow card so early on. Andy Porter with a high clearance. Gets underneath it as well up to Lee Mills. But Ford again towards Lee Glover. This is Hill again. He's carefully playing the wall towards John McCarthy. Does well there. Beats Wallace, flicks the ball for Mills. Lee Glover waiting in the middle, but a good strong challenge there by uh, Sigurdsson. A throw to Port Vale. McCarthy tries to get the ball into the centre there, but Kevin Keane that time getting it away. still off the pitch Pes I understand he's having stitches in a knee wound but he I understand he is coming back so uh, Stoker holding on with 10 men at the moment Nigel Gleghorn soon to come back when the doctor's done his work Lee Glover Stoke still holding him at bay Orlickson playing it to Sigurdsson Kevin Scott trying to make an impression there as well Wallace getting it through Scott again, but flicking it wide, and Tankard, who looks a really good accomplished left back, gets the ball away for Port Vale. Well, Tankard's impressed me. He's been a very good left back, and he's improving all the time. I like his composure on the ball. Gets forward, good engine, good little tackle, a very accomplished young player. Well, Nigel Glecklow just about to come back. That really was a quick bit of stitching there. Well done, the medical staff here at Stoke. And Vince Overson with the free kick. Up towards Scott. So 
So Gareth Griffiths, a name take, and a stain. He's complaining still to the referee there, as you can see. Can't hear you. Well, I can tell you the crowd here inside Victoria Ground today is generating an awful lot of noise. Glover going for this one, but beaten in the air. Pesky Solido. Throw to Stoke. Lee Sanford will take it. Stoke by Clarkson, Olixson to Clarkson, another former Birmingham City player. Scott's ball inside, picked up again, quite comfortably by Porter. Sanford. Pesca Salido's making a little run down this left-hand channel. And does really well. Well, it looks, he looked to be second favourite there against uh, Griffiths. But still got his shot in well. Yeah, he's looked sharp, Brian, on the three times he's been in possession, he's kept his team in possession, done the job properly, done it well. He looks very sharp to me. Bogey to McCarthy. Oh, a strong challenge there by Ray Wallace. Another yellow card. And what's interesting, Brian, is both sides are playing with wingers, and therefore... People are diving in at wingers, and McCarthy has got the ability and Guppy to take players on, and they, they're always aware of this player diving in. I thought Wallace committed himself much too far away from the ball there. So second yellow card of the game goes to Ray Wallace. First one went to Gareth Griffiths. Andy Hill with the free kick this is Tankard McCarthy cut out by Wallace Sanford it's Dean Glover with the header good experienced defender for Paul Fale Jessica Solido Wallace Scott coming in quickly for this one and wins it Kevin Scott now does really well. Across the face of the fourth player goal, goes behind for the goal kick. A warm applause for that effort. Scotty did exceptionally well there. He comes onto this pass from uh, Wallace, flicks it round him with the outside of the foot, deliberately meant that. He, good job he didn't go down there. Could have been a decision of a penalty for the referee to make. Just struck it with his left foot, not his favourite foot, pulled it wide. Off back by uh, Scott to Gleghorn to Sanford to Keane who's come to this side of the field Griffiths getting it clear it's Bogey always a neat player Bogey but the ball goes straight to Clarkson there and now for Wallace Keane Pesca Solido Hill did well. Well, then he gives it to Gleghorn. Crossed in again. Off the way that time by Dean Glover. Stoke at a corner. The volume's increased. Former Villa and Middlesbrough defender for Port Vale conceding that corner. Dean Glover. Toddy Orlickson will take it. shame about that because the one thing you don't want to do at this early stage is give the ball back to the opposition you want to put them under as much pressure as you possibly can and Augustin then just knocked it far too long 
hadn't quite got his touch because he has normally a lovely touch Russell White with the uh, goal kick Sanford bringing it forward again and Gareth Griffiths no, but just in time long ball straight through to the Stoke goalkeeper Carl Muggleton once with Leicester and Stoke <laughs> with uh, Leicester and Celtic rather now with Stoke Griffiths banging it forward again free kick for the foul on Lee Mills there's a few players involved around that ball there wasn't it Hill, McCarthy, big signing in the summer, McCarthy from uh, York City. Well, you wonder if the ball's ever going to come out of that corner, it will now because it's a free kick for Stoke. But it's a derby game that's generated a fair bit of passion, John. Oh, it's going to do that, Brian. You know, you, you see there McCarthy. On four occasions, he lost the ball and got it back again. That is what Roger will be asking his players to do. Fight for every ball, scrap for every ball in the first 20 minutes, and then we'll suddenly settle down and try and play. Record signing of 450,000 from York City in the summer. John McCarthy, 25 years old. Some wet stuff coming out of the sky. Very pleasant shower at the moment. Give a little bit of zip to the surface. This is Lee Mills. Lee Glover. Back to bogey. And now for Hill. Mills again. Uh, some good interplay here by Port Vale. And a shot from Porter that was not that far off the mark, but uh, there's some good work leading up to it. There was some good football play then by Port Bell. Starting at the right back here, Hill, who just played a little ball to the front, and off they built off of that. Now, Port Bell, I don't, I don't know what Breezy said about them last week, but for me, they're a side that can play football. Rudgy wouldn't have it any other way. He wants it done that way, and they can play on occasions. When they get the ball to feet like that, they look a very good side. to uh, look at John Rudge's record. I think he's been there about 12 years. He joined them in the fourth division. Took them to the first. Three lots of promotion, two lots of Wembley. It speaks for itself, Brian. It does rather. There's a good long clearance by Clarkson. Banged away very effectively by Glover. Overson. Clarkson again. Just clipped off. No, it's a uh, throw to Port Vale. Alan Tankard will take it. Porter battling on, supported there by Glover, Lee Glover. They get a free kick. One of those little unsung hero is a real dynamo in the middle of the field Andy Porter he strikes me uh, never beaten gets hit all the time that's right good tackler good at supporting the front good little player to have in your team well here comes the free kick I think Guppy's going to take this one haven't seen a lot of uh, Steve Guppy yet we shall before the day is out I'm sure Power header away as far as Bogey, driven back by him, but well wide of the Stoke goal. The rain really pouring down now. So that'll make it interesting. The ball will zip about drying on this lovely green surface now, and it should be better for playing good football.
Another good decision of mine to leave the raincoat and cap in the car, isn't it, eh? That's two of us. <laughs> That's a good bit of work by Sanford. Banging it forward. Dean Glover. It's a tank card. Real blow for Port Vale, having started really, they were very pleased with their opening day draw at the baseball ground against Derby, and then they uh, lost to Millwall with their second game, but the real sickener for them was to go out of the Coca-Cola Cup over two legs to Huddersfield Town. Porter battling away again, Wallace playing the ball in and Porter getting to grips there with Kevin Scott. And Scott is something like a six foot four against Porter's what? Five, eight, five, nine. Keen, the little touch. Overson looking around, getting the ball back to his goalkeeper Muggleton. I'm a little surprised here. I'm looking at Leghorn and I, I don't see a plaster over that cup, right? It just seems to be open still. Porter trying to get in. Leghorn chasing Porter. Sanford away, not a very effective clearance. Charge down, Andy Hill crossing the ball in again. And Overson uh, with a saving header at the expense of a corner. Well, big Gareth Griffiths might have something to say about this. Glover's in there too. Lee Mills is a big lad. successfully Ian Bogey Guppy Hill McCarthy again, dodging his way around Gleghorn, banging in a good cross there. Met by uh, Griffiths. Actually, after the early uh, break or two by Stoke, Port Vale territorially have had the better of it. Yes, they, they've, they've got the ball out wide, especially on the right-hand side to McCarthy. And I think the orders are coming from the box. Just cross it in, keep pressurising, keep putting balls across into the box. And Griffiths then came up and uh, nearly got to that ball. He's a strong header of a ball, the young man. Getting it clear up towards Mills. McCarthy. This is Tankard. And away comes Stoke now. Oryxson with Scott up ahead of him. Pesky Salido too. Here's well, the ball played wide for Clarkson, but Clarkson really had no chance of getting that. And Port Vale covered that well. Get the ball out to Guppy. with some space now to find McCarthy on this side. Oh, 
Easily cleared by uh, Sigurdsson. Tankard. Guppy. There goes Wallace. Comes to Orlikson. Might lift one forward now. In fact, he tried to find Scott, but it was cut out again. And they're offside against Lee Glover. Brian, I just can't believe Orlikson. He is the type of player you'd normally like to see on the ball because he's such a good passer. He can split defences, he can change play, and he's just given three simple balls away. Whether it's the pressure of a local derby, I don't know, but he looks very nervous at the moment, and he's just not doing what we know he's capable of doing. Free kick with uh, Carl Muggleton. And we got a look at Gleghorn's knee there and the stitches. Well, that's fortuitous. It goes straight to uh, Pesky Salido. Didn't really get much purchase on that one. Griffiths cleared that. McCarthy chasing. Strong challenge there by Sanford. Bogey gets past him. This is Porter. Griffiths. He's played a ball in there that uh, Mills almost got on. He was just a little bit on his back foot there, Lee Mills. Hill. Now Clarkson to bring it forward for Stoke. Keen outside him. Wallace inside. Sanford. Bollickson. Sanford again, hoisted a long one there towards Wallace. The foul by Ray Wallace. Really, that's the first time since the first five minutes that we've seen Stokes show a bit of passion and pass the ball accurately. They've knocked the ball about, and they look much better when they do this, when they play this way. John Rogers just come down onto the bench, something he's not happy with. Port Vale manager. bemoaning the loss of key players so early in the season but uh, he's a shrewd tactician is John Rudge and he's had a as we've said earlier on a really terrific record here at uh, Stoke at uh, Port Vale bounce beat the Stoke defenders a slippery turf beat Lee Mills I suppose, Brian, this is the first sort of slippery surface the boys have had either to train on or to play on so far this season. We've had such a dry summer. That's right. And therefore, I think we'll see a few of the players maybe slipping and sliding. But you were right earlier on. I was looking at Mills. He was on his heels when that ball was played yes. through for him. It was a super ball. He just wasn't quite ready for it. But he's the type of player. He's got a good goal record. And uh, give him half a chance around that box. He'll hit the target. Didn't have a very long spell at Derby, did he? But I think he it was something like seven goals in 16 appearances. That's not a bad That's ratio. That's not a bad no. ratio, is it, when you go to a club? Because it takes you two or three games, I suppose, to get in, to know the players around you. That's right. Like that. Overson in as though his life depended upon it. But Stoke lose possession again as Lee Mills takes it up on the far side. and goes Overson again.
Tankard. Back again for Tankard. The Glover trying a turn. Wallace held him up just for that moment, which was long enough. Dean Glover. Steve Guppy. Ooh, given away badly there to Pesky Solido. But Port Vale giving very little away at the back at the moment. Nice turn there by Lee Glover. Picking up McCarthy with a lovely ball. Now, can he get the return ball in there towards Lee Mills? Just a little too far ahead by McCarthy, but a good sweeping move and an excellent ball by Lee Glover out to McCarthy in the first place. Yeah, it's a great ball. He just turns here, good first touch, turns his defender, plays the ball accurately, good pace. McCarthy didn't quite give the boys time to get on this. It's just a little bit too narrow. It should have been just delayed a second and pulled back. Always had a soft spot for him since his Nottingham Forest days. I was in Brian Clough's office with him once with, uh, when Lee was sorting out something about a contract and he really stuck to his guns against Brian. And I thought, my goodness, he was only about 18 then. I thought, you've really got something about you. And he's a talented young Scottish player, Lee Glover. This is Kevin Keane, once of West Ham. Ian Bogey getting it away. Wallace. Hill, the long ball. The flag is up for an offside against Lee Mills. Try and lob the keeper. He very nearly did. Russell White was back pedaling. That was a cheeky little chip there by Nigel Gledhorn. He's so unlucky, Brian. He's looked up. He's seen Muscle White off his line. He looks up there, and there goes the chip. And it's floating, and Muscle White had to give in. It's nearly perfection. It would have been lovely to have seen that dip in. I'm not supporting Stoke, but, you know, the skill alone from Gledhorn was wonderful. Kevin Keane up towards Scott. In a powerful torpedo like header there by Vince Overson. If anybody in this division leads by example, it's Vince Overson. Here's Lee Sanford. Toddy Orlickson, might he try a shot here? Down goes the keeper. It's a good move, and here's Orlickson, he just controls the ball, looks up and he says, right, I'm going to let this go, and he let fly. On target, you can ask no more from your players, and he put it on target. Sigurdsson, it just slid off the top of his head. That came off McCarthy. It'll be a stoke throw. Half an hour gone. Glover, cut out by Sanford. Scott couldn't keep it going. Porter battling away. In comes Scott again. I think I may have called him Kevin Scott earlier on. Actually, that's what the program is. Keith Scott. This is Porter. Or rather, Guppy. And here's McCarthy. Mills. Before a moment ago, he may have been struggling a little bit to Lee Mills. McCarthy playing the ball in towards Guppy, Bogey picks it up, nice control there, finds Tankard with it, might try a long shot here. I 
Muggleton had no problem there, did he, with that? But Chanko did strike the ball well, but Muggleton had the perfect position. Tankard again. Southern boy had a little spell with Southampton Tankard and then uh, broke into the league properly at Wigan. Lover getting it back quite comfortably. Good jump again by Overston. Keen. Oh, it finds Gleghorn. Well, that was on target too. Charged down by Andy Hill. Clarkson chipping again. Easy one this time for the keeper. from the midfield. Ian Bogey, who played his early football up in Newcastle with Paul Gascoigne before he went south with Millwall and Orient. Guppy. of course also had a spell at Newcastle after Rip and Wanderers Tankard Keane gets it away Guppy hasn't actually had uh, made a lot of progress down that left flank yet. Not hasn't as, he hasn't received a lot of the, the, no, the service, Brian. You no. know, you, you've got to have the service to be That's able right. to go and show what you can possibly do. And I've just felt that they've not played into his feet. He's made good positions. I've been watching him because I, I felt he was a danger to Stoke. And Clarkson might have, Ian Clarkson might have a hard day today. But so far, they, they haven't given him the ball as he would like. Just to his feet. Up goes Scott. Fair. It, the game's just lost it a little bit at the moment, but Port Vale is still pressurising, still trying to get forward. Tankards. Boys should get this away, making life a bit difficult for himself, though. And for a moment for Stoke as well, but Scott picks it up again. Keith Scott. Tankard. Keen. Griffiths chasing back Pessy Salido uh, after him. Sanford's head up. Foul by him, a foul on McCarthy, a free kick to Port Vale. What stands out at the moment to me, Brian, is both sets of forwards. I will forgive Pesky Salido because he hasn't made a mistake. He's done exceptionally well. But both the, all the other players are giving the ball away. You've got to keep your side in possession. Leghorn chasing. McCarthy in possession and does really well. Oh, it was an ambitious overhead attempt there by Lee Mills. It didn't come off. And Stoke get the ball up to Harris. Keane playing it forward again. Tell you something else, John. Uh, Port Vale might well have come here as second favourites, but I've been very impressed by their spirit and their organisation so far. Their attitude has been superb. They've knuckled down to it. They've tried to do the right things. The two midfield boys are getting tired and winning a lot of the ball and spraying the ball about mainly out this side to McCarthy, and he's looked a threat. McCarthy's crossing ability is very, very good. Glover. That was Steen Glover to Lee Glover. Now Guppy, 
Oh, it's a good ball forward for Porter to chase. And Sanford in with a real last ditch. Here is there for Stoke. Excellent covering by Sanford there. Excellent covering. He was round on the cover. Had to go in with his right foot, which wouldn't be his strength, but got in there and just played it away. Tankard with the uh, throw for Port Vale. A little under 10 minutes of the first half left then. They'll know in this Potter is Derby. It's a league lover. Cut out by Gleghorn. Pesca Salido winning that in the air. Five foot four against six foot four of uh, Gareth Griffiths. Bogey delayed that pass until the last possible moment. The ball came off Wallace. It'll be a throw to Port Vale. I think Rudgie will have something to say about that. How you can get beaten in the air. I used to have that problem. I want the greatest <laughs> in the air. And the stick I used to get off of managers. Scott. decision there yeah I think that was a fair enough tackle from Vince Overson I've got to be truthful I would like to play against him myself but he's strong he's a good tackler he's, he's committed to the game he's a winner you know they're the type of players you want on your side wholehearted you know if he makes a mistake it's an honest mistake good captain as you can see there looking around barking out his orders organizing people and up he goes with this one Yes, judged it perfectly again. The header goes up to uh, Kevin Keane. Tucked inside this time for Orlikson. Flick for the outside of the boot. But again, Port Vale. Snapping the door shut in the midfield. They'll need to do so again. Here's Gleghorn. Clarkson. Ian Bogey. McCarthy. Just one of those misunderstandings there. The winger was wanting the ball over the top and Hill thought he wanted it to feed. Communication was well, what was wrong Well, it's the there. first time they'll have played together. Andy Hill, of course, only joining them a couple of days ago. So McCarthy really wouldn't have had any work really yet with... Uh, his new fullback. Actually, if Griffiths had not passed his fitness test, Andy Hill would have been uh, drafted straight in as a centre back. Up goes Griffiths for that one, though. Lee Glover. Sir Goodson after him. Will it come to Guppy? No. Kevin King got there first. Gets it back again from Clarkson. Stoke now trying to get on the move again. Pesky Salido. But the ball comes through to Lee Mills. And now with uh, Steve Guppy. Orlickson. Gleghorn. They are really bustling. They are working hard, Port Vale. They're not giving Stoke time to think, let alone breathe. And the shot goes away over the top there. It's covered there by the keeper. Uh, Andy Hill shot. I think that was more across, Brian, don't you? Come shot. We, whenever you were asked in the dressing room at half-time as a full-back, you'd say, oh, I, I meant, meant a shot, <laughs> Governor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that cross? No, as a shot, Governor. Well, it was nearly a very effective shot. Up goes Scott. On goes Pesky Salido. Oh, that was always a difficult one there for Muscle White. To be fair, Pesky Salido worked so hard at closing down there, Chase. He looks a yard quicker than anybody on the pitch to me. Whether it's because his legs are small, he's going at 90 miles an hour, but he is moving about, he's, he's making things happen, which you've got to as a player. 
So it's a Stoke corner. Overson's up there. Sanford's in there. Overson's header. Oh, they cleared it off the line. I think it was Steve Cuppy who actually got the ball over the crossbar. But it was a good header from the big defender. The goalkeeper, Musselwhite, has come here. No man's land. And there's Cuppy. Good defending. Unusual position for him, but they must place him there deliberately, Raji, because of his height. He's got it over the bar. Another corner for Stoke. Pressure building now, again on uh, Port Vale. They've defended really well so far. Coming towards the last three minutes of the first half. Deep corner again. Griffiths powering the header away outside the box. Keane struggling to get back to it. Kevin Keane for Ray Wallace. Laris Sigurdsson getting it forward. Keane again. Pesky Solido. Oh, he went calm Porter there. Very comfortably. And now McCarthy. Hines Mills. A chest down for Glover. They claim a handball there. Off uh, Orlikson. I suppose Glover and Orlikson would have been teammates at uh, Nottingham Forest together. That's what you don't try and hand the ball straight in front not of the really. referee. Even that man we say needs glasses at times didn't miss that one. I'm not saying Mr. Singh, I'm saying the referee, Brian. Glover. Guppy. Certainly a goal-saving header of his on the line a moment ago. Lee Glover playing it in again, and Ray Wallace getting back. You know, Stoke get a lot of players back in the box. They defend in depth. You know, there's Gleghorn in there. There's, there's, there's maybe eight players back in, back in the box here. Port Vale throw. Guppy. Some good work there by Guppy, but the ball had just drifted out of play. Neat player, Guppy. Got good skills, good left peg, and he can take players on either side. You know, he's got the ability to win a match on his own purely by his ability to dribble the ball past defenders and get his crosses in. Mills. Griffiths. Tankard. the Stoke manager in his uh, program notes today was saying the only important thing in a derby game is to win it the result comes first the performance comes second the only thing more satisfying is to win it and to play well you get the impression that Stoke have got a really hard task to win this one today they're not finding it easy at the moment to be fair to Port Vale they've had a lot of the ball and uh, really they're pulling all the stops out to try and get a result themselves here Sanford knocking it forward again It comes for a goal kick to Port Vale. I think both managers will be saying at half time, Brian, we've got to get better service to the front. And when they do get it up front, they've got to be able to hold it up and wait for players to come around them and support them. You know, at the moment, there's a lot of ball being given away, both ends, whereby they're not doing enough to keep their side in possession. But a good first half for Port Vale. Excellent first half for Port Vale. They've come here to play and they've, they've tried to play. They've tried to do the job properly. 
Water is Derby then at the Victoria Ground. Vince Overson with one header that was headed off the line by Steve Guppy just before half time. The nearest thing we've had to a goal. But still plenty to play for here. Stoke City nil, Port Vale nil. And uh, Port Vale has defended and has showed good organisation against the side, I suppose, really, that came here as a favourite. Let's have a quick word with the Stoke manager, Lou Macari. Lou, this game desperately needs a goal, although Overson was close there, headed off the line. You've got a lot of sorting out to do there, I would think. Well, it desperately needs a goal. Uh, I think you're right there, but uh, we hope it's for us. But up to now, it's been very scrappy. Uh, neither team really looks like scoring. Vince has come the closest, but uh, that really isn't good enough. Are Port Vale doing better than you in midfield? Uh, the Boston is in midfield, without a doubt. Uh, they're getting on top of us and causing us a few problems. Two wingers are causing us a few problems. But uh, there's another 45 minutes to go, Gary. So all the goals then to come in the second half and also in a couple of minutes the thoughts of Jimmy Greaves after the break. At the Riverhead United there's a change from your printed programme. At number seven, David Platt. He'd better be good with a name like that. Save me! David Platt. He must have cost you a few bucks. Interesting story. Last Wednesday week it was. Driving home late, saw these lads broken down. They'd been in town at the Grand for the Player of the Year awards. What have you got? Says Platty. Big Mac. Large fries. For their fish for the wife, says I. I'll give you a tenner for it. Says David. No chance. Says I. Hundred? Says David. <laughs> There's got to be something. You didn't get play for a Big Mac. Gonna fill a fish. Oh, not. Just a Big Mac. Bernice would have killed me. In all the years he's been coming here, her granddad's never won a prize at Talent Night. <laughs> Just like the Murphys, he's not bitter. Thanks to a widget, you can now get Murphy's Draft in bottles. To those men who are always there for others, who pass on traditions, who give their best every day, we give our best. Gillette Sensor XL. Spring-mounted twin blades that adjust to your face and soft, flexible microfins that set up your beard. And Gillette Series Shave Gel. There's no better shave gel. Sensor XL for the closest, most comfortable shave ever. Gillette, the best a man can get. I really didn't want my husband to color his gray hair. But then I discovered this, the hair coloring called Just For Men. And now he looks better than ever. Apply, and in five minutes rinse, eight out of 10 wives prefer that natural Just For Men look to gray hair. It's like you took off 10 years. With Just For Men. <laughs> Need to paint where a brush won't reach? Plastic coated. A paint that's safe and very tough. Plastic coated. A paint that can really take the heat. Plastic coated. A paint that helps fight rust beautifully. Plastic coat. It makes painting easy. Orange know how frustrating it is to be out of touch. So if your orange phone breaks down, it'll be replaced wherever you are within 24 hours, free of charge. The future's bright, the future's orange. Call 0800 286 286. Hollywood. Ask before you borrow it.
So no goals at half-time. They're bound to come in the second half. We'll have a look now at the highlights of the first half. Jimmy, after 15 seconds, Port Vale could have actually taken the lead. They could have done, actually. Uh, it just shows you, really, that, that from the whistle, you've got to be alive, alert. And I thought Mills was a little bit slow off the mark there and could have easily put Port Vale up. He didn't quite get there. Uh, Muggleton came out very well. But it just shows you that... At times, everyone thinks, oh, well, we can play our way in for a couple of minutes or so, and uh, it's not always the case. You've got to be there right from the whistle, and that was a perfect example. And really. Stoke had their chances perhaps a little bit later well, on. There's not been a, Nigel there's, Gleghorn? No, there's not been a great deal going, is there? I mean, we'll show Nigel Gleghorn's chip, which is very good, but, I mean, we're really showing it because there's not much else to show. Half, the, half of the uh, efforts have been so poor have not been really noteworthy. At least Cleghorn here knows what he wants to do and, and tries to execute it and was not very far away, actually. It really was a, a, a very good effort, this. And you have to say this was one of the, the best bits of football in the half because at least, as I said, the player knew exactly what he was going to do and uh, executed it well. Too many times players have wanted to do something and, and have lacked the execution. But that had the goalkeeper beaten it all ends up. He was very unlucky there. That was a delicate piece of vision then. And then it was good stuff. Vince Overson came thundering in and very nearly got one from a corner. Yeah, he was about... I mean, he, you can't say that, uh, that people are unlucky when this happens. Overson does everything right. Uh, that's why teams put men on the goal line uh, to protect the goalkeeper. And Guppy was in the perfect position. And he was doing his job job well. Uh, Muscle White possibly caught in two minds here and Overson hits it very well but you know, Guppy's done his job very well. Yeah. Well I should think one man who was pleased that that didn't go in in the first half is a man who is probably Port Vale's most famous fan. Here is uh, Robbie Williams, formerly Take That Superstar, talking to Gary Newborn. Robbie Williams, why do you support Port Vale? Well, um, from, from a kid um, my father used to run the Port Vale Social Club and um, I lived just, well, I used to live just outside the ground. I used to be there in a pram. So it's obviously uh, a natural progression to uh, keep supporting them. With all the singing that you do, have you got time to see them play very often? Um, well, that, that's where I develop my skills, you see, on the terraces, <laughs> giving it bail songs. Um, I haven't had much time just over the last couple of years, but uh, I've got a load of time now. <laughs> to do whatever I want, so I think I'll be going down the veil a lot. Yes, because you're, for those who don't know, yes. take, take that and Robbie Williams are uh, no longer no, an item. No longer an item, yeah, the big divorce. But that sits me down to go, I can't see the veil now, can't I? <laughs> now, what about Jimmy Greaves' remarks on the opening day of the season on our programme that Port Vale were not really uh, fit enough to be in the first division? That's what he said in so many words. They had no right to be there, was his actual words. Well, it's, it's great for, for us, for Port Vale, that is really, because last time he said something like that was about Tottenham coming down uh, to play Port Vale in the FA Cup, and he said all they have to do is find the ground. And we beat them 2-1 on the day. And also, before the programme, he said that we got no chance against Derby, and we got a result, we got an away uh, draw. So there's a point there. So if he just wants to keep saying nasty things about Port Vale before the games, that would be great for us. Cheers. There you are, Robbie. <laughs> they won't let it lie. They won't let it lie. Actually, I mean, anyone can beat Tottenham these days anyway. But that proves my point. There you are, Robbie. With the most fashionable group in the world, take that. Where does he finish up when he leaves them? Port Vale. Enough's enough, Jim. Enough's a Jim. <laughs> right, well, the whole of the second half coming up, and it's coming up after this break.
five mates invited me round for dinner. <laughs> Very tasty. New Pepper Army, Wide Boy. Help at sale is now on. There's massive savings on bikes and huge savings on car security. There's 15 pounds off selected child seats and Haynes manuals are only $7.99. Buy front profile velour mats, get rears free. And there's great savings on cycle helmets. Head down to the Halford sale now. Hello. Have you seen my razor? I think it's on the cabinet. Okay. Whose is that? Nothing to do with me. What do you think you're playing at? It's not mine. Don't look at I me. I thought we told you to be careful. John, I think we're the ones who should have been careful. There may be trouble ahead But while there's moonlight and music and love and romance Let's face the music and dance If your family suddenly grows, so too will your responsibilities That's why Allied Dunbar financial plans adapt so you can face the unexpected Let's face the music and dance Ally Dunbar, for the life you don't yet know. And they're off. A nice quick start. It's very close. Oops, a bit of a fumble there, but good recovery. And, well, there you have it. With thousands of great ideas in the new Argus catalogue, everyone's a winner. Only yesterday we were free spirits into free thinking, free loving. And? Now we're into free lampshades, free toolboxes, free doors, free paints. We're giving away loads of great products like lampshades, toolboxes and doors when you buy selected items all this week at the Do It All Free For All event. Where are they now? Remember Tub Tubson? Once Hollywood's Mr. Big, he shot to stardom playing huge roles. There was his titanic debut as the Iceberg. And who could forget his Oscar-winning performance playing a planet? Put us all in the shade. Until, of course, that terrible business with the chat show. Tug, isn't that low calorie beer you're drinking? Got a lot of body, just like yours truly. Oh, they ripped him to shreds. What people didn't realize in those days, it can help slimming or weight control only as part of a calorie-controlled diet. The industry buried it. Tubbs now works as a mold for dome beaters in Dawababi. Brought to you by Marston's Low C. So, nil-nil then at half-time, the second half coming up in just a moment or so. But, Jimmy, Lou said in his interview with Gary there that it was a bit of a scrappy game, things have got to improve. How and what would you do? Well, he's right. I mean, Lou was absolutely correct there. And, and well, what you've got to say to the players is the whole game is based on too many unforced errors. That's the problem. And I think we can go through to John Rudd, who's going to talk to Gary anyway. So, see what he says. <laughs> John Rodge, what have you been telling your players about the second half? Well, I think the front lads have got to hold the ball up a little bit better for us. We've had a reasonable possession, knocked it about. We've got to get Steve Guppy in the game on the left-hand side. He hasn't produced what I know he can. John McCarthy looks as if he can penetrate him down the right-hand side. And that's a little bit of quality in the last third we need. But Steve Guppy did it when it mattered. He headed that one off the line from Overson. That was a guy that was great. Um, that's what he was there for. Yeah. So there you have it. But that's it. Too many unforced errors. Yeah, players are getting control of the ball, and really they should be looking just to knock the ball, and they're not. They're, they're knocking it wide, they're knocking it here, there, and everywhere. So they've got to get control of the game, both sides. Really. Okay, well, they're out for the second half then. Yeah. Let's rejoin our commentary team, John Sillett and Brian Moore. So we're right about uh, Guppy needing to get into the game a bit more, John. Yeah, you know, he's the type of player that can get to the byline and get the crosses in. All important to be able to get players behind defenders, Brian. And he's got that ability and they've got to use that ability. But he can only do it with the ball when they give him the ball. And they haven't been doing that. Well, no substitution's been made at half-time. Stoke in the stripes then attacking the goal to our right.
expect anything else in a derby game. Two mills. Cut out well by Lee Sanford towards Keith Scott. take Stoke to the top tonight a victory of any sort would actually put them uh, level top and I suppose they're one of those sort of clubs I mean they don't look a bad side for all the fact that I think Port Vale have played well today John but uh, they look the sort of side that if they get one or two injuries I don't think there's an awful lot underneath I think Haven't Lou would tell you that wouldn't no, he? I was speaking to Lou Wednesday and he said he's not got the biggest squad in the world he's got 15 players basically that he can call on and uh, you've always got that worry, Brian. That it will be an injury to one of your, your main stave, one of your main players, and that would be a problem for him. I think he may have a little bit of money to spend, and uh, I know he's been doing a lot of miles trying to look for players and find players, but it's difficult at this time of the year. Well, it's Paul Musselwhite. That started down on the south coast, born at Portsmouth. And the ball goes behind for corner, is it? Yes, indeed it is. For Port Vale. Up comes Griffiths, who you fancy might be a real threat standing at six foot four. And normally a good header of the to boot run. They'll probably look for him, but in fact it was Lee Mills who got the header in, glancing away across beyond the far post. That was good service from Guppy. It's a good in-swinging ball, nice height. If you attack it and just get in front of your defender, you can really power the header in. He, he got in front of his defender, couldn't quite get the power onto the header. So Carl Nogleton with the uh, goal kick. again Andy Hill Lee Glover this is Ian Bogey oh he's gone past Overson here's Bogey with a chance it's a terrific goal by Ian Bogey what a super goal what a super charge bit of play as he goes past uh, Overson he really puts on the power there. Shows good pace there. Overson just left a bit short of pace. He's got his strength in his legs, and he crosses his ball in at oh, the near post. Inside the I've near been post. looking at my goalkeeper there and saying, Muggleton, I'm sorry, my old son. You should have had that covered. Here it is again. He gets by, and he thumps the ball inside. You've got to cover your near post as a keeper. And that's got to go down as a mistake from Muggleton. It's certainly a terrific bit of player from a mid uh, work by a midfield man getting up there so quickly and I was astonished actually with the pace that he showed to get past Vince Overson yes it's a great run of his Brian as you say a powerful run but he's been making those runs isn't yeah. he in the first half and never quite got that ball played to him though. Gleghorn now Bogey trying to hold him up Gleghorn playing it into Orlikson Clarkson with the cross is Tankard. Sigurdsson, oh, given away. McCarthy chasing, this time the keeper's there. And this, remember, in a Port Vale side without arguably their best defender, Neil Aspen, who's got the shoulder injury, without their top scorer, Martin Foyle, who's got a toe injury. And a side that's really not had a very good start. That, in fact, was the first league goal they've scored this season. And it was an excellent one by Ian Bogey. Now, really, Stoke has now got to start thinking 
right. We're going to push a few more players forward. And here's the goal coming up again here. Look how strong he is. He's kept Overson off, who is a, a very strong player, I assure you. And he's got good power into that shot. But it's gone inside the near post, inside the keeper. Well, here comes uh, Port Vale again, this time Lee Glover. Supported here by Andy Porter. Hits that straight at Sigurdsson. It comes out to Kevin Keane. Up to Pesky Solido. It's a foul uh, by Andy Porter on the Little Stoke striker. Free kick to the home side. Ended amicably enough, but here's Clarkson with the free kick. Vince Overson's gone forward, Lee Mills has gone back to mark him. Interesting time to get a goal as well for Port Vale because they, they daren't sit back and try and defend it now. They've still got to be playing the same way. Leghorn. Mighty try it. Wallace driven in. But well, wide of the goal. It's a deflection there, Brian, from Wallace's shot. It's a corner for Stoke. Kevin Keane going across to take it. Stoke looking for a quick response. Overson's in there. Sanford's up from the back. Played it wide. Knocked away again. Olexson will try and keep it going. And it's a Stoke throw. Finding Ian Clarkson. Sigurdsson. Goal kick. Keith Scott has won two important headers there, but they just haven't gone down to their own players. It's, he's there, he's strong in the air. And the, I just feel that Stoke have got to get somebody out wide and get crosses across to him. That is his strength, Keith. He, he likes balls being crossed to across the face of goal and he's, he's got that power in the air and he will score goals but he hasn't had that service to go after Kenny old George, uh, John Rudge telling Gary at half time they're going to get the forwards to hold the ball up a little bit and so on didn't say anything about midfielders coming through and scoring a goal like Ian Bogey To be fair to John Rudge, Brad, I, I think his two midfield players have done a superb job in the first half, which you, you mentioned, you know, they've won a lot of the ball, they've been spraying it about, it's just that uh, the forwards had not really held it up. That's right. You know, he's a tackler, isn't he, Bogey? And he had to, he had to make the decision of whether to play Walker or Bogey and he's, he's been bold and that's when as a manager you you right. really deserve a pat on the back because right. you've made the right decision so far anyway fullback in Clarkson very solid player he just just a bit of a long stride he comes onto this ball just stretching a bit too far it's just gone away from him just off his foot short in the stride Clarkie that's the answer to that answer. right isn't it get him on target Judge that one, Pesky Solido. Bit of pace there as well, and a good shot. Just uh, a half mistake there by Andy Hill. Pesky Solido was onto it, and again the pace we saw from Bogey a few moments early. 
that's a good run. Look at the power the little fella's got here. And it's a great strike. It's on target. The keeper's had to work. He's looked all afternoon as though he's going to be a threat. He just hasn't had the service, really, that he would like, which is more of the ball to his feet or more of the ball played down the side of defenders. Sanford. Wide to Gleghorn. A little touch there for Pesky Solido. No. Port Vale. Pick it up again. Is Ian Bogey, the goal scorer? Alan Tankard. Steve Guppy. Oh, he's done really well there. He's continuing to do well. Rifling a fine ball. Oh, no, not such a good one, but it was a lovely piece of play by Guppy there. Yes, he's a very skillful player. He's got a good left peg. He, he likes to tempt people into tackling him, and then he just glides by them. I tell you, when you look at him uh, jiggling with a ball like that, uh, he put me very much in mind of Darren Anderton at Tottenham, you know. Yeah. A bit like Tommy Hutchinson to me. Remember yes. Tommy Hutchinson, just a long stride and glide by players. Good balance. Yeah, you're, you're right. Anderson's the same, isn't it? Pesca Salido. Well, these are slightly perturbing times for Lou Macari as the clock ticks on. 12 minutes of the second half gone. Here come Port Vale again. Bogey caught in possession unfairly by Orlikson and Scott and a free kick to Port Vale. A bit unfortunate there because Tankard had made a very good break there and was just about to receive the ball with a lot of space in front of him. Judgment there by Griffiths. Ready for the play there. Handball. Ready for the play there by Andy Hill. I think Greg Orton's a shade unfortunate there. You know, he's been brave, he's gone in there and it's just hit his arm. Not That's out of play. Intentionally. But um, Mr. Singh in a better position than I, and he's done a very, very good job up to now. I think, I think so too. Ian Clarkson with the throw. Pesky Solido. Trying to get away from Dean Glover. Short ball to Keith Scott. Back to Pesky Salido. Scott with the shot. No kick to Port Vale. It's certainly a livelier second half. Yeah, well, that's how you build up. You know, obviously, both managers have said to their front men, come on, you've got to get into the game. You've got to make better angles to receive the ball. When you receive it, like there, you've got to keep us in possession. There's a shot. Yeah, by all means, go on. If you're a striker, have a pop at that goal. You never score goals unless you do, Brian. comes to McCarthy this is Mills towards Lee Glover not in a way by Clarkson good defending by Clarkson Brian I think uh, Glover with Lee Glover would just feel a little bit maybe he should have had a, a foul there he just got a nudge at the right time here's a cross coming if you see the fullback look he just nudges it at the right time that's a lovely then... approach player going by Paul Vale yeah yeah they play well it's McCarthy with the corner for them Pushing and shoving there as the uh, corner came in. And a free kick goes to Stoke City. A good punch by Muggleton, that. You know, he didn't hear the whistle go. He committed himself, came bravely, came in amongst them, and it was a good punch. Well, now the second half gone. Ian Bogie's goal, giving Port Vale the 1 0 lead. Glover 
trying to hold up Pesky Salido. A little bit of frustration showing there in the Canadian. I think he was trying to say something, wasn't he, about his shirt, Brian? And pulled off. Keen into it. Well, Tank had looked for a moment as though he was going to concede the corner, but a quick readjustment and it became just a throw. Pesky Solido, Kevin Keane, here's Clarkson with a cross hit, hit in early, and the keeper just clawed at that one, Muscle White. But here's McCarthy. The long ball forward, cut out quite easily by Sanford. Stoke putting on pressure now, looking for this equalising goal. Wallace. Leghorn losing out to McCarthy. Bogey stretching to get to that one. Mills. And now Guppy. Good left foot on him. And arching the ball in towards Mills, but Overson was equal to it. Clarkson now completing the clearance. Good bit of fullback play there. Up to Scott. Goal kick to Port Vale. Hey, Bill, you see, it looks to me as though the Port Vale midfield, Brian, get to support their front men quicker than the Stoke boys are doing at the moment. They're, they're very quick to support the front. It's either bogey, he'll go when the ball's on the opposite side, one of them is making the run to support the front early. Tankards. Sanford. Rescue Salido. Held up for a minute. Keane playing it in. Tried to find Scott with it on the far side. Scott does well. But Hill in the end concedes the corner. The rain slanting in again. As Kevin Keane goes across for the corner, Vince Overson comes up once more. Sanford in the box. Scott at the near post, another six-footer. Played wide again towards Sanford, but it was uh, Hill who got up very well indeed for Port Vale. Wallace playing it wide. Here's Keane again, putting a lower cross in this time. Keane again. Duffy getting it clear. And Guppy going well clear now. Clarkson coming across, but there are white shirts getting up in support. Porter amongst them. But Guppy! Good piece of work, and Glover get there. Well, Guppy carried that ball from virtually just outside his own penalty area, held on for it for so long, and then succeeded in getting a really testing shot in that Muggleton... Uh, to leap across the save. Well, that was outstanding, Brian, wasn't it? Great skill. Here he is on his left peg. He jinked past one, looks up, nothing on, jinked past two, and now he lines himself up, and it's a great strike on target. And there we thought Glover was following up, but he just hesitated. Good skill, good play, and well done, Guppy. Come on, get on, guys! Glover, McCarthy. Hill getting it forward. Lee Mills pulled back by the linesman's flag. Well, I suppose Lou Macari's got uh, Simon Sturridge and John Gale, a couple of strikers he can come on if he wants to uh, inject some new life up front. I would just feel that Pesky Salido looks a thorn, really, in the, in the heart of the defence, the Port Vale defence, and therefore I'd, I'd be inclined to leave him on. Scotty just wants to be moving about. He wants to get himself a little bit more mobile. Quite heavy rain now here in Stoke. McCarthy. Lee Glover, 
McCarthy shots. Oh, nice. An excellent piece of work. A readjustment again there by Dean Glover. Saw the ball going over his head, but that little backward flick there, the headed pass back to uh, Paul Musselwhite, was enough to hold up uh, Pesky Solido. He's done exceptionally well, Dean Glover. He's yeah, a he solid has. player, composed. He's read the situations. He's done exceptionally well in the heart of that defence. I think they're going to bring on Simon Sturridge very shortly. Oh, Stoke City. Sigurdsson caught out a little bit there. Lee back with Glover getting in. Mills. McCarthy. Trying to get to that byline. Shoved over by Gleghorn, but Port Vale may have looked, and their fans certainly looked for a. I couldn't tell whether it was inside the box or out or something, but anyway. It's inside it's the box, but I'm not sure of that. And it looks a bit of a body check by Gleghorn here. Just a little bit of a check, but it, having said that, having seen it there, I would say referee you made another good decision. But it's Toddy Orlickson who's coming off. Simon Sturridge, number 12, who's on. And a really heavy shower now. Lee Glover. Sanford. Eskis Lido's swarming about ahead of him. Here he is. Hold on to it too long. There was a foul on the uh, Stoke number seven. Free kick quickly taken. Here's Keith Scott. Long range shot, go kick. So, what do you fancy do? Makari wants Sturridge to do. It looks like he's taking up a position on the right hand side here, doesn't it? It looks as though he's asked him to go out and take Tanker though. You know, which he'll find difficult, because tanker has got good pace. Sanford gets it clear. But I feel with Sturridge, he has got that ability to go by people and to cross the ball. And uh, really, there hasn't been a lot of crossing from the Stoke um, team, uh, from the wide men. They haven't really got the supply into the front men. Simon, yet another Birmingham City connection in the Stoke side. Keane gets the ball forward. Pescocelino held up again. Free kick to Stoke. Vince Overson up once again. Looking for Keane to float the little header in. Just touched on there by Keith Scott. Yes, Keith Scott definitely got the finest of touches on that. Just move the ball. Here it comes in there. And you'll see Scott just gets a touch here. Just a flick, and it goes straight on to the goalkeeper. Bogey. To McCarthy. Now for Hill. Good awareness there by Guppy. A good play by Tankard, but the cross was delayed long enough for Wallace to get in there. Port Vale's throw. It's the last quarter of the game now. McCarthy. Well, he held uh, Overson back there. Free kick. 20 minutes to go. Muggleton's kick. Scott with a header. <laughs> Guppy. Don't think Glover will get to that. Yeah, 
know, it's something that seems to lack in our game at the moment, a player with the skill to be able to just hold the ball and caress the ball and to just take players on when you need to. And Guppy's got that ability, isn't he, Brian? He has indeed. He's good to watch, isn't he? Up comes Muscle White. Rudgy looking serious, isn't he, there, and trying to work it out. I think I've got it right. He must be saying to himself, I think I've got it right. They're solid at the back, the midfield are competing, and the wide men are doing their job well. I mean, without laboring the point, the secret weapon has been Greavesy, and Greavesy's remark about Port Vale, I would have thought that was John's uh, team talk today. What a motivator that would have been for John Rudge. Mind Greavesy can motivate anybody, couldn't he? Spreads it wide this time now for Guppy. Here he is again. Swarming, uh, there were four Stoke players swarming around him then. Scott can't keep it in play. Port Vale throw. So Goodson gets it clear. Overson back to Muggleton. Toledo. Clarkson to Key. Time beginning to become the enemy of uh, Stoke City, but here's Sanford. Peskis Toledo on the far side, sliding in, but never really with a real and realistic hope of getting that one. Goal kick. But that's what they've got to be looking for, Stoke. They've got to now start pushing the fullbacks wide and forward, Brian, and start getting crosses into that box. They haven't tried that yet, and there it goes, sailing across. Just a yard away from Pesca Salido, but that's what they need to be doing. I'll be asking the fullbacks now to say, start volunteering, start taking a chance of getting forward on the ball side. Lover. Mills up alongside him, and McCarthy up alongside him. McCarthy chipping it in, a lovely little ball now. Glover after this one. With a lot of credit there to Sigurdsson. Got a corner for Port Vale. Dean Glover started to go forward to this one, then had a look around and thought, well, no, maybe the time's getting uh, coming close for us to be just a little more cautious. We've got a, a lead here to preserve for the next 15 minutes or so. McCarthy. It was Kevin Keane who hammers that one away. Tankard versus Sturridge. Just kept in play. Oh, he wasn't kept in play. Free kick, right? Oh, free kick, I beg your pardon. Yeah, he just, he just pulled him back. Tankard just pulled Sturridge back. That's it. Oh, given away again. Nice little play there by Porter. And now, uh, Glover to Guppy. Trying to get round Overson. has gone down let's see what the referee is going to do he's well, it looked to me Brian as though Iverson just stepped on him there yeah. you know just stepped on the side of his leg Guppy had just checked back and Iverson seemed to go in with his studs and just caught Guppy on the leg do you want treatment or don't you says the referee no he doesn't so it's, it's a tug on the shirt a little shoving push. and pushing there but and I think and it there goes the stud yeah that was oh, a bit that's, silly of it that's out of order I think if the referee had had the slow motion camera there, he might have taken a bit of action against uh, yes, Vince yeah, Iverson. You know, there, you know where your foot's going, Brian, and he knew his foot was going on his leg. For me, that is what I felt, didn't I? Mills. Back to bogey. Back still further to Andy Hill. Porter. 
McCarthy. Hill struggling to get to that one. So unlucky. Wasn't it a good build-up, though, Lovely Brian? build-up. You know, simple one-touch football going on, good movement off the ball. And it was just that uh, maybe it's that rain that's coming down. It just skidded that ball just off the top and it just got away from him. Gleghorn. Up to Wallace. And now for Scott. Shot on the ball. McCarthy brings it away. There's a chance for League Lover. McCarthy again. Bogey. Mills. Picking out Guppy. Bogey. Dean Glover. Forward towards Lee Glover. And it'll be a Stoke goal kick. There he is, there's Rudgy. Shouting out his orders. Keep it tight, keep it sensible. Don't make any silly mistakes, he'll be saying. He was filling our ears with uh, tales of misfortune before the start, wasn't he? About all the players who were out and so on, but... He's a professional at it, isn't he? <laughs> Dean Glover's free kick. A little too high for Lee Mills. Good covering again in that Stoke defence that time by Andy Hill, but it's gone straight to Clarkson, and now here's Simon Sturridge inside for Clarkson again. Not forward, but Glover getting it away over some of his chest. The whole game at the moment compressed with all the players about 10 yards either side of the halfway line. Overson. Getting the header in now for Clarkson to chip it forward. Tankard. Andy Porter knocking it forward. Overson getting it back to his keeper. And 12 he, minutes left now. Andy Hill's had a good debut, hasn't he, really, Brian? He's been very solid over there. Good defensive qualities. Well, Griffiths took the safe way out. And you can't blame him for that with uh, Piscis Salido breathing down his neck. Quarter there for Stoke. Stoke will look for somebody to come powering in here. Overson and Sanford are there once again. Scott stationed at the near post. But it was Griffiths with a header that got it clear. Up to McCarthy. Played by Glover to Bogey. Stoke are making another substitution, I think. Graham Potter might be coming on. I think it might be Keith Scott who's coming off. Bogey. Portvale ball. Also another former Birmingham player. And it's Scott who's coming off. Graham Potter. Also Potter right, was more of a midfield well, player. I, I thought he was midfield defender. With back. John Gow on the line, I thought maybe Gow would have been going on if, if Scotty was replaced. Keith Scott comes off. I don't think he's only too happy with that decision. Looks as though Sturridge has gone in to play up front. Yes, indeed, and uh, Potter has gone to, well, left side midfield. Yeah, they moved them all across one, I think. No. 
Sandford, former Portsmouth defender with the throw for Stoke. Offside for Batesley Glover. Goodson winning it in the air. Here's Guppy again for Port Vale. Clarkson. It's a Port Vale throw, which Alan Tankard will take. three players in contention to be truthful and right. uh, they've done exceptionally well it's Port Vale throw enjoy that job don't you love it <laughs> the mistakes you can make <laughs> doing that Brian which I have done Pesky Salido just a little touch on but there's no support up there you see what Stoke have done is taken the height now with Scott going out of the forward line, hoping to play balls down the side of the central defenders and rely on pace. Keen. Foul on Gleghorn. My quarter. Fifths with the header clear. Not a lot of ground on it though. Pesky Salido. Sturridge knocking it back. Leghorn. Might look for something here on the right foot, but it's charged down by the Port Vale defenders. A whole wall of them there. This is Potter. Couldn't get his left work operate, left foot operating there, but it'll be a throw for Stoke. He's taking it. Potter again. Played by Gleghorn, Sanford. Testing times these for Port Vale, but uh, Port has got it clear. Here's Bogey, a little bit of acceleration. Lee Glover's up ahead of him. He's looking for support from Tankard on this side. Doesn't get it, but Dean Glover following up well now for Port Vale. Guppy. That's a good ball, a good bit of play again by Guppy. Hill. It is. Yes. So Goodson and now Sanford coming to the last five minutes. Port Vale about to make a substitution. Tony Naylor coming on. They're taking uh, Lee Glover off. He's done a lot of good work up front. Lee Glover worked very hard, especially in the second half. He's worked exceptionally hard, made some good runs, but he's just shaking his head, and so he's got a little knock there. And I think that's why they're making the change. Tony Naylor, a striker originally with Crew Alexandra. Oh, that was misjudged there by Griffiths. Oh, and there's a chance for Stoke and Sturridge somehow contrived to put a glorious opportunity wide of the far post. Uh, All starting actually with uh, a misheader by uh, Griffiths. Gareth Griffiths. 
here it is now he's directed it back in there you should never do that young man and here's a golden opportunity and Sturridge oh. maybe hadn't been on long enough to get the feel and the weight of the ball and just try to place it in instead of sticking it in low below the beside the goalkeeper so it remains 1-0 to Port Vale with about four minutes left for my man of the match Brian I'm, I've had I thought in the Stoke side Overson done exceptionally well at the back there he and is, Pesky Salido looked lively up front but I've got to go with Port Vale Port Vale have been the better side in my opinion on the day and I'm going for Bogey the midfield player who scored the goal he's made some tremendous runs well here's Sturridge Stop to in full flight for a moment there because he yeah. thought Stoke were going to equalise. I thought Stoke <laughs> might be grabbing an equaliser. That does happen when I give man of the match. So I think Bogan. he's made some tremendous runs. Well, in here he is on the ball now. And there he goes and gives the ball away. Thanks very much, Bogey. But, but his goal Guppy is has been outstanding as well. But he has won the match if they get the result, Port Bell, for them. And therefore, that's why he gets man of the match from me. Up goes Porter. Clarkson going in. Good jump that time by uh, Griffiths. But Gleghorn, a tenacious player, Gleghorn. Bogey just flicking it away. Tankard playing it forward, but Guppy can't get that one. A throw to Stoke with two and a half to go. Overson. Andy Porter with a header. Now McCarthy. Playing it wide. Get up there after that one, he says to the substitute Naylor. Let them chase it. And it's a good ball at this stage, Brian, wasn't it? Over the top, turning the defender. Silly free kick to give away, actually, by Naylor, but uh, a very good ball, very intelligent ball. Goalkeeper taking it. Time is really precious for Stoke now. Up goes Lee Mills, beating Overson in the air that time. Port Vale looking for their first league win of the season. Having scored their first league goal of the season. And they've defended well. That's a free kick. Foul by Wallace on Guppy. Dean Glover has done well. I've, I've mentioned it before. He was one of the players on my short list. I think he's been outstanding at the back. He's marshaled his defence. He's been in, com in complete control of the match from the start. Hit long by uh, Muscle White. Here's McCarthy. Stoke get it away again. Porter playing it in once more. Good jump by Overson. Now Bogey, man of the match. Knocks it wide for Andy Hill. Again, Vince Overson is there. He won't accept defeat yet. Run well into the last minute. Potter taking it down the flank. There's more defending yet for Port Vale to do here. Sturridge with a bit of pace. Playing it wide again for Potter. Wallace waiting in the middle and Keane's in the middle too and it's gone over the top. Wide of the goal, goal kick. It might just be the last alarm for Port Vale. It's a good cross here from Potter. Right across and Keane climbs very high, just awkward, just cannot get his forehead to the ball. Just hit him slightly on the back of the head. First time I've had the pleasure of uh, coming to a Potter is Derby, John. And it's, it's not been spectacular, but it's got a good passion about it and I've enjoyed it I must say and uh, I, I love days when underdogs do well yeah they are they are good days in football aren't they I've had them against me and they hurt but at the same time
Port Vale haven't had the best of starts. That's right. A certain member of our staff has motivated That's them right. unbelievably. And uh, he should get the freedom of the city. I don't know about Stick. Well, I saw Stoke last week at uh, winning at Leicester, and they won well there, particularly their first half play was brilliant. Uh, and they really haven't approached that today. To be fair, they haven't been allowed to approach that, Brian, have they? You've got to give Bell nothing but credit. They've really worked very hard, closed them down, and played it sensibly. Up goes Hill, wins it in the air. They're playing uh, nearly a minute of time added on. If Stoke are going to do anything, they've got to do it now. It's Potter. And there's the final whistle. It's three precious points for Port Vale with a goal by Ian Bogey early in the second half. And uh, Stoke, who'd started the day in this Potteries derby, hoping that a handsome victory would take them to the top. It hasn't worked out that way, but a lot of credit to Port Vale, who battled valiantly in defence, had the better of things in the midfield, and when it came to it, had that one crucial moment when the smiling Ian Bogey stuck the ball inside the near post, feeding uh, goalkeeper Carl Muggleton to give Port Vale the three points. Let's have a word with John Rudge, the Port Vale manager. Well, John, you deserve that, and, uh, and your first win of the season, and you must be well satisfied with your performance. Well, it's a great result. I don't think it was a vintage performance. It wasn't a vintage game, but we've managed to win a Potters derby, and that's very important for us. But you approached it the right way. You got in possession in midfield and scored the goal that mattered. Well, that was right. Ian Bogie just managed to squeeze it in the near post. I don't know how he's managed to do that until... Well, it's the goalkeeper's fault, I think. Really. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, there was a good build-up play for it, and then he's managed to squeeze it in the near post. There wasn't a lot of really what you call clear good chances, but we battled away for it, and possession-wise, I think we had a little bit more than them, and overall, it was a great win for us. But it could have been a draw because Sturridge missed a great chance for Stoke near the end. He did, yeah, there's no question about that, but, I mean, uh, that's the way it goes. We've managed to get the three points, and obviously our supporters will be delighted with the result. And you're off to a winning, to a winning position now. Well, that's right. It's good to get back on the road because um, we had a good start, and then we've had a hiccup with the injuries we've had, and obviously, you know, this will give us that confidence which you want. OK, just hold that, just one second, because we haven't got time to talk to Ian Bogey, but here's the Ensley Man of the Match award if you'd just like to give it to your player. Well done, Ian. Cheers, got that. Very nice. Oh. <laughs> they won 1-0 last season. They've done it again today. In a couple of minutes, the views of Jimmy Greaves and, of course, all the action from yesterday's Ensley League fixtures. Join us in a couple of minutes. We found it. The amber nectar. What is that? Well, it's a flesh-eating spadefoot. That is the mother of all toads. Ah, the mother's behind you. What do we do, Slake? Well, you have to sip it slowly at first, see, to get the flavor. And then you just let it glide down. Golden throat charmer. Oh, he was after my nuts. For years, all petrol engined cars have been fitted with a catalytic converter. However, in time, phosphorus in engine oils will build up inside it and stop it working as it should. Castrol's new GTX Protection Plus is an oil designed to be more catalyst friendly, making it work cleaner for longer. Castrol GTX Protection Plus from the Liquid Engineers. Got a flat roof. Let's face it, could leak. So what you're gonna do? Thompson's roof seal's easy to apply. It forms a waterproof barrier so rain can't get through. Leave it to chance. But the day your flat roof leaks, don't say I didn't warn you. Thompson's Roof Shield. Buy now. Don't pay later. Sweet for my sweet sugar for my heart. 
We've designed a fridge freezer unlike any other. As you'd expect, it's completely frost-free. But the really clever thing is, while it's no bigger on the outside, it has deep, deep doors. And an extra cubic foot of space on the inside. Sweets for my sweet, sugar for my honey. I'll never ever let you go. The Hot Point Mistral Plus, ideal for any family, no matter how big they are. Visit the West Midland Safari Park for only $3.99 with the chance to win a free safari to Africa. We're on the A456 between Kidderminster and Bewdley. Well, we've already heard from the winning manager. What about the loser? Lou Macari is now with Gary Newbottom. Well, I would think the losing manager's had a right go at his players for giving away a goal with the goalkeeper's fault at the near post and missing two great chances near the end. Is that what happened in the dressing room? Uh, no, I think we're more than disappointed, Gary. I thought we treated the game like a five-a-side match. Uh, it wasn't certainly no five-a-side match. We were playing against Port Vale. Uh, we lacked a lot of passion, a lot of commitment, uh, and it was quite, uh, it's quite obvious to watch right throughout the game that we weren't going to get stuck in. We weren't going to treat it the way the game should have been treated. Uh, which is to get at them, get a few tackles in. I can't remember us having any tackles in the game. I can't remember us winning balls in midfield. And at the end of the day, although you say the goal, we should have stopped it, uh, probably the better team won. Well, the, be the best team did win on the day, Lou, but as football goes, you had two great chances at the end. We did. Uh, I think if we'd have scored them, Gary, we'd sit in here delighted that we'd sneaked a draw out of it, but we didn't really deserve a draw. And I think our lads are going to have to realise that, especially here at home, and especially in front of our crowd, our crowd just want commitment from everybody. And if they get that, they're not too disappointed at the result, whether it's win, lose or draw. But we didn't give commitment today. Jimmy, is that a fair appraisal? I mean, he seems to have put it in a nutshell, then. Uh, tough stuff by Lou. He's absolutely right. Totally honest. They didn't show a lot of commitment. Port Vale were... <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Port Vale for the Premier League. <laughs> uh, but they were the best side, Vale. They were. They, they actually did give the commitment, they showed it, they might well have scored two or three actually, and Lou's right, he's got to be disappointed with Stoke, but Paul Bell, well, raji has got to be well pleased, hasn't he? They I started think. the second half in, in the best possible fashion, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did, they scored a goal, which uh, which of course is the the important thing, and uh, yeah, I mean, you've got to, you've, 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 you've obviously got to look at uh, Carl Magritte's situation here. Bogey does very well, he keeps going, shows a bit of pace. And you always, whether you agree with it or not, and whether the goalkeeper could be deemed to be half expecting a cross back because there are Port Bell players running in uh, for the cross, you have to put it down to the keeper, unfortunately. It's a near post shot. But having said That's that, it was a good run in the first It was place. a super run by That's Bogey. Uh, Fully agree with Snoz, he definitely was the man of the match, I felt, as well. What about Steve Guppy? He could have put them two up. Yeah, I mean, he looks a good player to me, yeah. Guppy. He looks a real find. I, uh, I, I don't say I'm surprised that he's at Port Vale, having come from Newcastle and Wickham. You better be careful. And Wickham, what so I, I have to choose my words carefully. But Port Vale have got a very good player here, and he looks to me as though... He could be playing for a better club if there were a better club than Port Bell, which, of course, we all know there isn't a better club than Port Bell. And just very quickly, Stoke could have equalised. Ah, the last well, few I mean, you've got to look at this and say, well, there's not, there's all when when you're one nil, when it's one nil, there's always likely to be chances going, and really, Sturridge, Sturridge will not be happy with this this miss because I know he had only just come on as a substitute but you have to be alert at all time it's what we said in the first half and that really was a very very poor miss 
OK, Jimmy, well, what of the fans then? Because I should think one set are very happy and some are rather disappointed. We can get a few views now by joining Dennis Coth at the Victoria Ground. Well, we've got the jury here, or at least a third of a jury, and the Port Vale fans here to my right, they're smiling and happy. John, you won here last season, you've done it again. Yeah, we're very delighted to come here and win. It's always nice, particularly without two key players, Aspin and Foyle. And to go into a derby match without two players of that calibre, we'd have been happy for a point. So we're over the moon, yeah. delighted. Right. Let's go to a Stoke fan and Lindsay. You look miserable. What went wrong today? There, we couldn't get any goals. I think the day I wanted to win it more. Well, Philip, you've seen the matches this season. You win at Leicester and you can't win at home against uh, your neighbours, Vale. No, no, I think they just wanted to win it more for their supporters and what our players did for us. Let's go quickly to uh, Helen, another smiling Vale fan. You must be pleased with this to beat your rivals. It's brilliant. It was such a game. It was a cracker. Everybody was brilliant. And they all played as a team. Just OK, well, one side uh, very happy, one side not so happy, but uh, it's been a great day.